Each year, people donate more than $200 billion to charities. But how do you know if the organizations you are giving to are doing the best they can with your gift? Well, the new book, More Than Good Intentions, asks what programs are working and why. And this morning, we are joined by the authors, Dean Carlin and Jacob Appel. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for Thank having you. us. All right, well, let me start with you because we've got a lot to get through, and this is fascinating information, especially when we're talking about people giving money, and it's supposed to go to the right place. So, Dean, let me start with you because in the news this past week, 60 Minutes did an investigation with Greg Mortensen, the author of Three Cups of Tea, and there are a lot of questions about whether his humanitarian aid work and the money that is going to his charity is really making a difference, and it's really legitimate. So when people look at that and feel sometimes like, you know, well, maybe I'm getting duped, what do you say to that? So what we say is that we need to get outside of the, the grand statements that like everything's corrupt or everything works and we have to recognize that the answer is kind of in the middle, right? Really? And it's, it's, a not, bit so, of a gray it's area. not so surprising. You have to just accept and it? No, but you need to find out what works and what doesn't. And that's the heart of what the book's about is going to the going to the field, going to the ground and setting up very clean, good scientific tests to find out what really works and what does not. And that's the heart of what the book is about and the research is about. Well, let's about. get to that, Jacob. I want to talk to you about the heart of it because part of the book's title is about this new economics. What exactly is that? So there are kind of two pieces to this new economics. Um, neither of them is brand new. Both of them have been proven um, you know, in, in its own sphere. So one side is this kind of careful evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, that means getting out into the field and really looking at a program close, you know, getting on the ground and um, interacting. Do you really have the time to do that, though? I mean, are we being realistic about this? Yeah, uh, myself, I spent two years in Ghana doing exactly that, going out into vegetable markets and, you know, outdoor bazaars and um, interviewing market right, sellers. Does the average Joe who wants to donate $100 have the time to do something like that? Oh, of course not. And that's exactly why, um, why we wrote this book. So we, we realized that a lot of this research does get done in the academic community, and most of it ends up being discussed at conferences or ending up in journal articles. Mm -hmm. But um, where it needs to be is in the hands of people who can do something with it, and that's people like you and me, people who can donate um, 50 or or $100 to charity. So if they know what works, then they can be empowered to make better choices about which programs they support. And that's part of the new economics of all of this? Exactly right. All right, so let me get back to you, Dean, because people, you know, talk about ridding the world of poverty. I mean, is, is that something that is on the table? I mean, can we do this if we do it correctly and we're smart about where our money goes? So I, I tend to try to stay away from goals that are quite that ambitious. I think there's no doubt that we can make a difference. There are some very clear problems, and we do have some answers to some of the problems in some of the places. It's a, it's a search. We're not in 10 years going to end poverty. So what were your intentions in writing this book? Because you're helping with all of these problems around the world by giving people the information, the insight, to put their money in the right place. So the striking thing is because there is so much poverty, it means that small actions can actually make a big difference. We're going to see a reduction in poverty if we make the right choices. So we can improve things. That doesn't mean that in 10 years we're going to see the end of poverty. And, there's the and when we talk about small actions, I, I want to talk to you about this, Jacob, because I mean we hear a lot. And I think it, uh, there was a man who won a Nobel Peace Prize when it comes to these mi micro loans. How does that work, and, and, and are those really efficient, and, and do they make sense when it comes to helping people who are in poverty? So. Yeah, microloans and, and microcredit in general has been a huge buzzword in, in this field, in the field of development in the past 10, 20 years. Um, and this is the practice of making a small loan to a poor entrepreneur so that they can grow their business. And it makes a lot of sense. The idea is um, you give a loan and this person increases the profits of their business and that helps them lift themselves and their family out of poverty. Um, what we're actually finding in the first rigorous evaluations of these microloan programs uh, is that some of the really nice stories that we hear are coming more from other areas of finance, like micro savings. Yeah. Um, so instead of giving people a small loan, giving people access to a simple savings account um, is proving really powerful in terms of transforming their lives. Interesting. And when we talk about the tangibles, as you last left off discussing, discussing that is, um, another thing is, is it true that how you can change the way a farmer in Kenya makes better choices can actually help us lose weight? What is that all about? That just seems kind of here, there, and everywhere, really? That, that's one of the themes of the book, is pointing out that there are some similarities, and some of the solutions actually ring true for us, also ring true in developing countries. So the, the point of that is that we all, we all have various temptations in life, 
whether we're rich or poor. And one of the solutions that, we've, that we found in Kenya that helped farmers um, invest more fertilizer for their farm was to give them prepaid access to buy fertilizer ahead of time. And this helped them resist temptations that was flittering money away so that when, when it was time to plant, they didn't find themselves having enough money for fertilizer. So why, what's the analogy to that yeah. for America is very straightforward. We're very, we, we all have temptations. Mm -hmm. We want to find ways of pushing our temptations away from us so that in the future, we don't succumb to those temptations. So in weight loss in America, people can write co commitment contracts. Mm -hmm. And we started a website for this called STICK, S-T-I-C-K, and there's an extra K, S-T-I-C-K-K. -K. Mm -hmm. And this is a website you can go to, and you can pledge your credit card, and you can say how much money you want to lose, and you can name your friend as someone who can hold you accountable. And if you fail to lose that weight, or you can do the same thing with like stopping to smoke and things like that, then the, then, then the website will charge your credit card and send your money away to the charity that you hate the most. Bottom so. line, when people look at your book and they think about how they can help, say someone has $500 and they mm -hmm. want to donate it to charity, what's the first thing they should do? What's the best thing they should do? So the, there's, there's, at the end of the book, we talk about seven different ideas. And on the website that we have, we, we've expanded that list further and we've changed some. Because one of the things to realize is that this is not a, not a static list. That we will, it will grow and it will change as we all learn more. So one, one quick answer to your question is deworming school children. Deworming school children has proven to be one of the most effective, from a dollar spent, what do you get out for that dollar? methods of helping to improve school attendance in sub-Saharan Africa. And so there are a lot of programs that are working to help get access for, help, help you know, g give deworming pills to children through school-based programs so that they increase school attendance. And 10 years later, the long-term tracking of these programs has found increased of income, increase income. All right, so, so Dean, that's your advice. What about you, Jacob? What's your advice? Um, Maybe in some ways the most important thing is to stay current. So um, as Dean mentioned briefly, uh, we have uh, what's called the Proven Impact Initiative. Um, and you can find out all about this on the book's website. Uh, and this is an opportunity for any donor to keep abreast of the newest research about what works and what doesn't. So you'll find on that website uh, a number of different ideas that, are, that have been proven or are on the way to being proven effective. Um, as ways to solve poverty. And that's so important because you want your money to go to a program that is effective. This is very good information. I do appreciate you both joining us. Thank you so much. Jacob Appel and Dean Carlin, thanks for being here. Thanks, thanks, thanks for, for having us. us.